Welcome back friends, welcome to another video from Shomu's Biology and this video is very important and very special because in this video we are going to talk about digestion of dietary lipids and uh, it is kind of a very tough thing you know for a body to process. The reason behind it is that it is hydrophobic, uh, phobic, sorry let me take a smaller one here okay because it is hydrophobic due to the nature of lipid to be hydrophobic it cannot be easily carried through the blood right so there are triacylglycerols uh, there are cholesterols okay as well as there are phospholipids phospholipids all these things are there and they are all hydrophobic so it's very difficult to uh, take them through the bloodstream so how exactly we can achieve that and pull that off let's talk about it the digestion of dietary lipid begins in the stomach let me write here in the stomach okay and what happens in the stomach is that in the stomach it has acid okay acid stable enzyme lipase this lipase that is acting in the stomach are acid stable okay and this is mostly either lingual or the gastric lipase that means either secreted by our glands in the mouth or secreted in the stomach glands okay and this acid stable lipase can digest the triacylglycerols okay it can digest triacylglycerols or TAGs okay which uh, in most cases these TAGs are found in milk so if you drink milk then this process continues in the stomach but that's not enough this process of fat digestion begins in the stomach but it continues to the small intestine small intestine because this is where the maximum absorption of the lipid and break, breakdown content of the lipid will be done or digestion of the lipid will be done and that is aided here in the small intestine in the small intestine by bile salts bile salts okay now the question is who provide this kind of bile salts the thing is here we have a very important organ that is called the liver and liver provides the bile produces the bile the bile is stored somewhere in the gall bladder it is stored in the gall bladder and gall bladder pump bile in small proportion at a time into the small intestine okay now what stimulates the release of the bile from the gallbladder there is a stimulation stimulation is done by cholecystokinin cholecystokinin okay and that is further regulated regulated by hormones Okay, cholecystokinin release is regulated by hormones and cholecystokinin stimulates the release of bile salts from the gallbladder and that bile salt is now is going to be released in the small intestine and here the gastric motility continues and this bile salts emulsify emulsify fats okay which is present in here and as a result of this emulsification of fat we have digestive products digestive products what are those digestive products the product is free fatty acid free fatty acids it can be two monoacylglycerol monoacyl glycerol it can be cholesterol okay or it can be free long chain fatty acids okay 
these are all the components which are produced as a digestive product and bile salts further act on all of them okay so bile salts will act on all of them and they will produce a component known as mixed micelles okay now this mixed micelles are facilitated absorption of dietary lipid by the intestinal mucosal cells okay so there are intestinal mucosal cells and these cells will start absorption of this mixed micelles which is produced there okay so now in the blood stream what we are talking about in the blood stream now we are talking about in the blood stream okay but before going into the blood stream let me release here before going into the before even going into the blood stream uh, they also form different sorts of lipids lipid components which are associated with apolipoprotein okay and all these lipid molecules small fragmented lipid molecules they form chylomicrons chylomicrons they form chylomicrons hmm? and these chylomicrons are formed they are secreted they are secreted they are secreted into where they are secreted into lymphatic system and the lymphatic system is always present in the epithelial cells of the intestine where they are covered with all this lymphatic uh, system and then through this lymphatic system it reaches the blood stream okay and in the blood stream they have this chylomicron structures which mostly carries lipids along with proteins not only lipids because simple lipid trans uh, transfer of lipids throughout the blood stream is not that easy so they always combine itself with proteins and then finally the blood will bring those lipid components into the peripheral tissues peripheral tissues okay excluding the brain remember that brain does not get any of the fat from here because brain relies on glucose for its energy requirements okay so the digestive absorption which we know here this can directly this can also directly provide the components into the blood stream it can also directly do that but here for the lipids they need to take the approach via the lymphatic systems okay so now what we want to talk is what happens in the stomach as i said the acid stable uh, so the components are produced but in the small intestine bile salts are active and different lipase enzymes are needed uh, to act on this fat emulsified fat in the small intestine right and who provides all the important enzymes the enzyme secretory gland here is the pancreas okay the pancreas we have the pancreas pancreas is secreting different enzymes what are those enzymes here bicarbonate first of all bicarbonate not an enzyme but bicarbonate is secreted pancreatic lipase is secreted okay then cholesterol cholesterol esterase is secreted phospholipase a2 is also secreted all these components are secreted by the pancreas and they are going to act on the small intestine they are going to act on small intestine and that actually you know bicarbonate bicarbonate ions and all these things they are going to emulsify the fat and pancreatic lipase is doing the job of lipid digestion predominantly in the small intestine now again the release of these components such as the phospholipase a2 is regulated hmm? 
For example, cholecystokinin release stimulate the secretion of all the enzymes like pancreatic lipase, phospholipase A2. Cholecystokinin. Chole cystokinin. That regulates the activation of the enzymes like phospholipase A2 for pancreatic uh, lipase and all these things. And another protein secretin release stimulates the secretion of bicarbonate. So, let me take another color. It influences the secretion of bicarbonate, positively influence, okay, both these cases. And both this cholecystokinin and secretin, these are actually hormones, so they are also further regulated, they are regulated by hormones. Okay, so this is kind of an overview of digestion of dietary lipid. The digestion starts in the stomach with the help of the lingual lipase and it is con concluded in the small intestine with the help of pancreatic lipase, bicarbonate as well as phospholipase A2. So this is the summary and if I zoom out here, you can clearly see this is the big picture of how dietary fat is digested. Now, in the next lecture, I am going to talk about the utilization of this dietary components after the digestion for the fat and production of this triacylglycerol as well as the degradation of the triacylglycerol and how it is done. Okay, So, stay tuned and watch the future videos. So, if you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more videos like that in future. Thank you.